Hello everybody, my name is Super Metroid Fan, and if you can guess by this little paper right here, it's another tutorial video. Huzzah! The last one did pretty good actually, so I'm I'm a little surprised a lot of people want to learn how to make a barbarian. So I've been doing a lot of D&D uh, &D recently. Um, not to record my own personal adventures with my group. I'm the DM as usual, yay. I've had to do a lot of work recently with specifically undead necromancers and creating in uh, what's the word for it? Rival party, that's the word. So basically, this time, for one, I've got a player's handbook on hand. I didn't have this last time, I think. Did I? I don't know. I haven't looked at the video before, did. So, don't know if I did it right last time. Uh, I might have rolled d20 for the stats, but that's, that's wrong. You're not supposed to do that. I follow what the book tells me to do for certain scenarios. Uh, but this time we will be doing a different class. We're not going to create a barbarian this time. We're not going to create really anybody that's intent for melee. We're going to be going for um, uh, something that's a little bit easier for first-time magic users. This handsome man right here. Okay, you really can't read that, but sorcerer. That's the point. We're doing a sorcerer today, okay? I wonder if there is a way for me to show you. It says, uh, that's right, like, <clears throat> no, nope, just comes out flipped. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, so there's no way you can just get it. But if you if you have a player's handbook, you can get the idea. So we'll be creating a level one sorcerer this time, and there is a reason I'm doing these videos. Moving forward, uh, this time I actually have a different dice set. I had bought this at a nearby gaming store for like five bucks or so. I needed one of these kind of cases to fancy. If you're a DM, I suggest you pick up Dyson, this kind of case, and the satchel is my that's from the previous episode, which I have for the purposes of necessity. Yes, I always keep extra dice on hand. If you want to play Dungeons & Dragons, it always was worth it, especially DMs out there like me. Alright, so I haven't done a character in a while, on my own terms, but as a member from last time, we have the proper paper, I seem to me, although it's blank. Hmm. How do we fix this? We make a character, correct? Yes. Right. I'm not gonna cross class the sorcerer. I know putting a fighter in for the bonus beginning feats is a good idea, but no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to cross class. These are all gonna be just pure one class, the characters that I'm gonna do. Right, and also um basically when you play a sorcerer, the defining points for sorcerers, wizards and the like, uh, well different for Wizards is that you're... I'll explain that. If I get a wizard, I will eventually. Um, basically, the point of a sorcerer is they can cast spells on the fly. Wizards have to choose them ahead like divine spells, but they can specialize in schools so they can know all the spells from that school, but they can also negate schools and forget other spells entirely. You can't learn them at all. Or you could just play them so you know so many spells. Anywho, uh, basically, a sorcerer knows a limited amount of spells. Equivalent to the amount he or she can cast, and cast them on the fly, like that. That's the advantage to them. They cast on the fly, but they aren't specializing in them, and they don't know as many spells. Although I think they can cast more per day. But you can also cross-class them together. I probably wouldn't. I'd probably make a bard sorcerer. I don't know, that seems like a good idea. They both get from charisma. Anywho, so, the sorcerer that we will be making, I always name my sorcerers the same name. I am using a mechanical pencil. I don't know if it's the last time I didn't check the video again. I always name them Bali. Right there. Bali. Can you see it? See? Mm -hmm. Bali. Can't tell if you can tell. Uh, player. Leaving that blank. Class and level. Sorcerer. Level 1. Uh, really, what you should do, unless you're doing what I'm doing, which is the purebred, is where it says. Sorcerer, right there, yeah. You would uh, usually use the, if you're gonna do a cross class, you would use the shortened version of the word and then do a level about the same distance and then put a one, then a slash, and then one for the other level. Um, race. Hmm, I don't know. Tell you what, let's do something that's kind of fun. Let's actually pick a race. I'm kind of doing this one a bit more improvised. I haven't, I haven't fluctuated with any wizards, because I am. I prefer melee in almost everything. In video games, I prefer 
melee. Um, Devil May Cry is the exception. I thought trying guns for a bit would be fun, but no. I like to cut stuff. I don't like to sit in the back and throw spells. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, that's, nope. Unfortunately, there is nothing that specializes for sorcerers. If there was, I would pick it. There is a, the elf bus, which is good for wizards. I suppose... Where is it? In the book here. I suppose the closest thing would be... From all these multitude of races, human, halfling, gnome, half-orc, dwarf, half-elf, elf, and then the female in the regions. I think a half-elf is good, because they're similar to humans, but a little improved, because they're half-human and half-elf. So I think this time we'll be going for a half-elf, just for the pure idea of advantages. So race, this time instead of being human, is half-elf. That's the difference. Typically I would also suggest doing human, because the human gives you one bonus feat and bonus skill points, but in the case that I'm more experienced than I was when I did my previous video, and I've been twerking... I have been working a lot with D&D specifically. I think trying a different race this time is fun. Oh, also, if it, you can see more of me because I couldn't get the same rig up last time. I don't know how I did that last rig up, but I, this way you can kind of see more, so it's not actually better. Um, alignment. Hmm. All magic users prefer neutrality unless race says otherwise. So I think we go for neutral unless I can find the stats for uh, half elf. I, there we go. Half elf. Hmm. Nope. Does not appear to have the restrictment. So, like I was saying, they are some of the humans. Now, here's the difference. They are the same size creature. Their base level speed is 30 feet. New is sleep spells and similar magic effect. Plus 2 1 throws against enchantment spells or effects. Low light vision. See twice as far as human and starlight movement. Torchlight, blah blah blah. Uh, remain the ability to distinguish color and detail. Plus 1 on listen, search, and spot. And. Plus 2 on diplomacy and gather info checks. Elf blood is in favor of them, obviously. Uh, and then you'll comment Elven. Yes. And they can learn any language other than secret ones. And they don't have a favorite class. So that means if you're multi-classing, then you kind of would do the regular human thing, which would take penalties on classes. But we're not multi-classing. This sorcerer will remain sorcerer. And it's half-elf. Just because that's actually really good. Uh, alignment, since there's no restrictions, neutrality is probably best. Uh, a deity. I don't think there should be any for a sorcerer, unless you're going to be evil or good, then there's specifics for that. Size, as preferred for medium. Age. Hmm. How to think of age? Well, a sorcerer's powers begin at the age of puberty. According, like, I'm not even joking, that may seem stupid and funny. Um, no, it does say right over here in the sorcerer's age, which is relatively far back. Here we are. Sorcerers. Sorcerers create magic that the way a poet creates poems with inborn talent honed by practice. No books, no mentors, no theories, just raw power they direct at their will. Some sorcerers claim that the blood of dragons courses through their veins. Yeah, you really need that to do this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hang on, where is it? I read it here somewhere. Hang on. Wait. Where? Where is it? Where is it? I read it here somewhere. Hang on. Wait, what? Wait. Um. Where the frig is it? It must seem weird if I don't find it. Right, I can't find it, so... <laughs> I'm gonna look like a huge pedo now. Oh well. It happens on YouTube. Move forward from that. Uh, sorcerers, right. Age... Oh yeah, that was I doing. I will do this based on dice roll, that's what I prefer to do. That's my good ones. I roll them on 2d10s and I do the number that I get. 
Certainly not 82 years old. How um, can't say eight either? That's too young. 32. How about 23? That's a bit better. So 23 years old. Gender. I'm a man. So male. If you're a woman, go ahead and switch that if you're following me. I I uh, have hopes have about the same height as human, so six would be pretty tall. He's not gonna be that tall. About five feet six inches. You know, there. Almost there. Wait. Not as much as a barbarian for sure. All that freaking muscle on them. I feel like a huge pedo just saying that. I think the weight should be something about 175 pounds. That's a little tiny gnat in front of my face. There you go. Eye color. Alright, I'm between blue and green. Even number, blue. Opposite for green. A six blue eyes, it is. I often put randomized things like this up to chance of dice roll. It's up to you. Again, this stuff is all how my sorcerer will look. You can do it however you please. I'm not that hard to care. Because uh, it's your decision, not mine. Um, hair. Hmm. Honestly, again, I'm. this is kind of like I'm doing it a bit different from the previous one, but that's different. This is a different video entirely. Hair, hair, hair. What color should the hair be? Brown. Skin, tan. Just because that's me. Change it to however you feel like. It doesn't have to look like you, but whatever. All right. And of course, as previously, the scores. Scores? Uh, where's my giant dice of bad go? Hang on. Wait. Where is it? Hang on, it's behind me. Ah. Nope, that's a map. Nope, that's my speakers. Nope, that's the NDP. Uh, nope, that's money. Yeah. Where'd you go? Aha! My giant sacrifice. Get out of here, money. It's not about you right now. It's not about the money. Uh, do 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 do. Let's see here. That and that. There we go. Four dice. And just as I have said last time, a piece of paper is handy to do to keep checks. Right. So I don't remember if I did like this last time. I possibly. Possibly did that where it will be twice. Uh, anyway, what you're supposed to do is you take 46s. One, two, three, four. You roll them all. Then the highest three you write on a piece of paper combined. And the lowest one you just throw the fuck out. I rolled really high. Uh, get rid of the four. Four, five, six. That totals up to 15 for one score. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this sorcerer's gonna be powerful. Uh, two sixes, a five, and a four. By four. Um, how much is that total? Do do do. Seventeen. Why am I getting only the odd numbers? That's kind of weird. Oh, there we go. There's a weak one. How much is this? One, two, three, three. Up. Oh, one. Can't re-roll that. Uh, that's an eight. Oh, it might be worth it if I get all high numbers like eight. Like 17 again. You know, one bad score is really good. Really isn't that bad. Uh, especially when you have ridiculously overpowered scores. Nope, nope, hitting low streaks again. Oh, wait, one. Three, four, two. That would be only a nine. This isn't looking good anymore. I don't want to scare to have negatives. Hmm. Six, five, four, and three. You turn into a one. No, you're four. I saw that. That's better, that's an R15. Now I know last time I might have done my preset item numbers, but this is kind of randomized. I usually will have like magic users a bit random since they're e since they're not that strong early game, but they're very powerful late game. Usually I've through the first dungeon master that I encountered and taught me and my friends how to play, he was teaching us how to stack for late game, not early game. Because early game is the easy part. And the last roll is Actually, good. A, another 15. Yes, another 15. 
Hmm, this is troublesome. An eight and a nine. So if you were following me with these rules of the rolling of dice, D&D &D books say you can scrap your entire set that is lower than ten. Fortunately, me losing everything else. And this video is already about 15 minutes, and the spells are going to take a long time. So I'm going to just scrap the 8 and the 9 and see what I can get. Seventeen. That'll replace the eight. You know, I suppose the nine isn't that hard. Like, really, the nine can be the one weak score. So he is actually quite powerful. He or she, depending on who you are. So these are the final scores that are being used. You can't read them. Fifteen, seventeen, seventeen, nine, fifteen, fifteen. I do believe. Yes. So this mean Computer, stop it. I hear my computer whining. Shut up. You like this. Um... Right, let's see here. So, sorcerers and wizards, you have fighters to punch. Put in, put the frickin' nine in the strength. Obvious. I didn't write correctly because I don't. Hang on, where's the black folder that I had underneath it last time? Screw it. <laughs> that was unintentional. I'm sorry. Those are those are all magic item things. <laughs> this is my D and D binder, and this is a made up. God, in this stuff. Um, that's new. This is Nutruba. My DM. The uh, hang on, I wanted to show you guys so you know what this is. Nutruba is a god that was made up by my DM back when I was a player. His holy divine symbol is that of the yin yang symbol with the black on top. The white is on the bottom, and basically he revolves around law. He has an opposite called chaos. The two fight and are supposedly part of the balance. Uh, I made my own gods in my stories, but, you know, they're pretty cool, actually. I like the way he plays them. Alright, uh, so the strength score is the 9, which is a negative 1. It's the F. It's the 1 F on a strong report card. 9 is gone. Uh, dexterity. Hmm, dexterity increases AC, and since sorcerers and wizards usually at low ranking levels don't get a very high score, give that. There's only two 17s. Hmm. Yeah, it won't need anything else. 17 can go into dexterity, which gives a plus 3. Constitution, 15. Intelligence, 15. Wisdom, 15. Charisma, 17. So you get your other powerful score. And then the 15s are 2, 2, 2. Right. So here are these scores. I think they're backwards. Crap! Why is my camera reversed? I just came to realize that. Is it fixed now, Jeffrey? Oh, it is. Okay, so now we're in 720p. I am sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are in much better resolution. So I do believe you can do this now. Nah. Or at least make it out. I'm sorry it's reversed. I thought I, thought I did it properly. I can't write backwards, okay? Uh, so basically, your strength is 19, your dexterity 17, your charisma is 17, and constitution, intelligence, and wisdom should all be 15 if you're using the same rules as me. So basically, you have one negative and three awesome, three positives and two awesomes. I said things wrong. <sighs> right. Now. What's the thing over here? Oh yes, health. Uh, sorcerers and wizards, unlike the barbarian, which would roll each level with this, said with this, a d12, uh, they roll with something known as the triangular awkward dice, a d4. Sadly, at level 1, you never need to roll these, so these can just be chucked out the fucking window. For now. I'll be back later. Uh, so, that would mean 4 is automatically going to happen. Our constitution is a plus 2, so this sorcerer has 6 hit points at starting level. Amazing, huh? Right, then his armor class. Wizards and sorcerers, they use arcane magic, and wearing any form of armor reduces the chance of casting arcane spells properly. So this, therefore, regard armor as useless. FUCKING USELESS WITH THEM! So you're gonna really get magic items that won't stop you from casting. So using any form of armor, a gauntlet, a piece of, a, like, a, even a buckler, a simple small shield that would go on one's elbow, is not good. So armor and shield, I just put them zero already. Dexterity is a three size, or medium, no positive or negative. Natural armor, currently none, deflection, misc none. Speed, 30 feet, because that's how fast elves and humans are, or half elves. 
So the armor class total goes to 13. Fucking amazing, huh? Um, I also recently figured out the system of how flat foot and touch work. Touch completely negates all armor you're wearing, but allows you to keep your dexterity, so it's still 13. When you're flat footed, you only keep, you lose uh, everything but your shield and armor. So 10. Mmm, 10 AC. I just stole from somebody. Whoops, didn't mean to. Uh, initiative. Well, sorcerers. Hang on, did they get that bonus feat, half elves? I haven't used races before, I have to check this. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Nah, 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 nah. Oh! Oh, this is interesting. I didn't know that. Half elves do not get the bonus feet to humans yet. I thought they did. Well, very interesting. And the loud flapping of book pages is awesome. Sorry about that. So you only get one feet if you choose half elf. I thought you got two like you were a human. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. Usually I will throw improved initiative in, but... Mm, mm, uh, no, it's worth it. Improved initiative, so I'll put the 4 in the misc and 3 in dexterity for a 7 initiative. Hoorah. Right. Uh, now the save. Sorcerers get a plus 0 base attack bonus. They can't hit for shit. Um, well, they do better than some classes. They get a plus 2 on will save, however. So if they save to will is a... 3, 0, and 0 for Fortitude and Reflex. Ability modifier Constitution is a 3. Pretty good. And then everything else is a 2. No, wait, no, I got that backwards. Reflex and Fortitude, it's not the same. Uh, right, Reflex is the one that has a 3, the other two get actually twos. So, Will is a plus 5, Reflex is 3, Fortitude is a plus 2. Hmm, well, that's interesting. Uh, base attack bonus is a zero. No spell resistance on this guy yet. That's gonna be fun. Uh, grapple. Negative one plus zero. Negative one. He loves to cuddle, but he's bad at it. Uh, right now, the fun part of a familiar would be to have... Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. The fun part of a sorcerer is a familiar. Familiars, uh, pretty much... The way I do it is I let my players choose between two types of familiars. Ask your dungeon master if they allow this as well. To have a realistic animal or a spirit animal. Realistic animals can do things in combat and use spells, and even later can, regardless if it's spiritual or not. However, it can also use its um, racial features such as attacks, etc., and whatever else, and directly participate in combat. Whereas a spiritual animal can go face their walls no more than five feet wide. They they they, have, they can't be any bigger than five feet. Basically, one square. They can't be bigger than one square in total width. And uh, as for the spells and stuff, they can still do that, but they don't like add to anything. They can't cast on their own too. Um, they can't damage enemies, and they can't die really. They just get resummoned whenever you snap your fingers to get them back. If they just go poof or whatever, you lose them. Uh, you get a permanent link with them, of course, just from level one. Uh, you also are... No, no, I don't do that part. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is you can choose to have, in my games, a real animal or a spirit animal. Spirit animals I find better just because... Why the fuck would I throw a rat into combat? Because usually sorcerers will pick rats or whatever else. At least in my knowledge, that's what I always pick. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, so the different familiars you can take are bats, cat, Hawk, lizard, owl, rat, raven, snakes, or toad, or a weasel. Mm, tough choices. Um, each of them gives you a plus three or plus two to something. The plus twos are rat and weasel, which are plus two to fortitude, and then reflex save. In that order, rat, weasel, fortitude, reflex. Our sorcerer has a rat, and I gave a rat to another because he had a poor constitution. The plus threes to everything else are the bad cat, hawk, lizard, owl, raven, snake. Which is, the bat gives you a bonus to listen, cat gives you a bonus to move silent, hawk increases your spot checks and bright light, lizard increases your climbing ability, owl increases your spotting in shadows, raven increases appraisal checks, snake increases your bluff, toad, you get three hit points. It's toughness. Only once. Um, preferably, I think, different ones have advantages. In my stories, typically, uh, listen and spot checks are used 
to kind of um, you know see the nearby area and detect those enemies nearby. So I would kind of I might want to choose those, but those are for my games. This character might not be for me. You know what? I would say the bat. I'm gonna take the bat, which would give us a plus two. Listen checks. Those listen checks are quite useful in general. Attack. Hmm. General gear. Uh, I'm gonna buy gear this time because I have a book on hand. So I expect this to be a longer tutorial than usual. Who knows how long? Alright, moving forward. The skill points. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Two plus intelligence modifier times four. Two plus two times four is four, eight, twelve, sixteen. And the choices are bluff, concentration, craft, knowledge, arcana, profession, and spellcraft. So that would mean, let's see here. Put something there, something there, something there. Mm -hmm. A type of knowledge. Profession? There we go. So the skills that you would choose are between the ones in the black boxes. That I filled in. That says Arcana. Don't judge me. That's why I'm here to be on YouTube anyway to be judged. Um, and you can only put four into natural and two into cross class. Immediately. Oh, well, here we go. Sixteen, right? Take four of that shit right the fuck off the bat and put that into concentration. If any of you out there are wizards or sorcerers, you know what I'm talking about. Concentration can be the best thing or the worst. So, what would we do next? Um, I don't know, I suppose bluff, but like, well, how many are there in total?